Ah, welcome to the spookiest time of the year, January, because ad revenue is lower uh, this month. To celebrate the spooky month, I will now talk about two Airbnb horror stories. For a fun game, let's do a tour of the unit Airbnb refuses me a refund for. I'm sure they'd hate if you liked it and shared this. I'm sharing this in, in a way, <laughs> which seems to be the only way to get their attention. Let's start with the entryway. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome that Airbnb uh, charges the guest for a cleaning fee, but then you check in sometimes and this is how the f floor looks like. Not great. It looks like someone was snacking all over those stairs. Uh -uh. Not great stuff, not great stuff. Up until about a year ago, I had a very extended period of my life in which I essentially just lived off of Airbnbs. I was kind of in between places. I was looking for an area that I'd like to live in. So Airbnb just seemed like a good way of uh, trying out different locations that I like. One trick that you can do, and I'm not saying that that's what I did, in, in case it's not legal, in case it's a not legal thing to do, just in case, I'll say that I didn't do what I'm about to say. But if you do want to stay at a B&B for a long term and not pay as much money, you could book it uh, for a few days and then just ask the host if you could pay them directly and avoid some of Airbnb's fees. I'd say that nine out of 10 cases of Airbnbs that I stayed at, I had genuinely very good experience or else I wouldn't have done this that many times. But that one out of 10 is usually something uh, like this. But wait, Airbnb, there's more. When I left today, I locked the door. When I got back, it was unlocked. That's trespassing. You can't do that. Even if it's your land, you can't just go into someone's a place that they're renting. And one of the screws was missing from the deadbolt. The host is naturally suggesting that I am too stupid to lock a door properly, despite locking it 10 times before. So then she says that there was a cockroach in the place, but she killed it, uh, which was a mistake because Airbnb wants proof. They want you to pose next to the dead cockroach like a guy who caught a fish. They want you to be like, that's a cockroach and I'm the guy who killed it. It's also a way to intimidate. Airbnb because they know what you're capable of. Here's the proof. Here's a living cockroach. I hate cockroaches. Freak the shit out of me. Unsettle me quite a bit. Here he is, little f Luckily though, for Mel, this wasn't the end. She also got to experience a whole zoo at her Airbnb. We have rodents, mouse droppings, and general filth between the fridge and the cabinets. Besides that, Mel also talked about how uh, the hot water wasn't working. And in response to that, Airbnb asked this question. <laughs> Is there a way you can send us a documentation to support that hot water isn't working? Now I thought about, I've been thinking about this. <laughs> how, how would you do that? And if there was a way to document that. Airbnb should be the one to suggest that, right? They should have like protocols for these situations. I guess you could like turn the tap all the way around to the hot one and then just put your hand underneath it and you're like, you see, I'm not getting any uh, four degree burns. See, I'm fine. My hand is fine. My hand isn't getting burnt at all. The ceiling seems to be leaking as well because there's rain coming down into the house. So you're getting that real, uh, real bad infrastructure sort of experience out of your Airbnb. Yeah, I mean, this all just looks rough. This looks like this person broke into an abandoned home and then listed that as an Airbnb. <laughs> Some of these things on their own, like I wouldn't complain about that. Like, you know, this being a bit out of place. But when you just stack up the state of everything, of course you're gonna find it all annoying. And then we get this, hey, Melanie. We are saddened to hear that you had this experience and we hope you do not let it discourage you. I can't imagine how disappointed you must be that you are unable to make this trip. I hate those sort of support messages. Oh, sorry that your food delivery uh, didn't have any food in it. We are sure you must be so sad. We were sure you must be so sad and heartbroken. I don't care about what you're sure of. <laughs> 
just want a refund. <laughs> As a neutral third party not present during the reservation, we must take a fair decision based on documentation and communication for both host and guest. After currently reviewing your claims is not enough evidence for a refund. I'd say this is plenty. And then their policy is that they now put it in the hands of the host to decide if she wants to allow a refund. That's f crazy. From the way it's described on Mel, this place wasn't presented as what it is in the Airbnb uh, post. So you are essentially, as a third party, saying, we are gonna put the decision on whether we refund you or not in the hands of the person who scammed you. We're gonna ask the scam artist if they want to give you back the money and we'll see what they say. Here's a saga of what reaching out to Airbnb help about this was like. 5 p.m. check-in, Mel notices that the furniture is different, but is willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. This is just a, a variety of descriptions of the various times that she's encountered roaches just in the first few hours of her in the Airbnb. Reaches out to Airbnb, they're not helping her very much because she didn't send them proof of the killing of the roach. I got someone named Jennifer M on the phone. She asks for evidence, which I duly provide. I Except for the hot water, which she never told me how to document. She says that she'll work on the issue overnight and update in the chat, which she hasn't. She reaches out again straight up in the morning, gets a different Airbnb uh, uh, representative. The Airbnb person asks her to show her turning the knob on and ask the host to show her which way to turn it on for hot water. Melanie responds with, what on earth are you talking about? Meaning Airbnb sent a person that just had no idea about the situation, thought that Melanie just didn't know how to turn on the knob for hot water, completely missing the fact that it was just broken. Please read the entire thread, the hot water I assume that you're talking about here is only one small problem with a nightmare situation in this Airbnb. This person ends up ghosting her, probably because he was embarrassed. They tell her that she can get a refund if she checks out by 11, which is the host's own policy. So her partner comes in, they like managed to pack everything together because this was, she paid for a long stay. She paid for like about a month of being in that Airbnb. Now the support person who promised me the refund also promised she'd get back in touch with me within an hour. Guess what? An hour comes and goes. I send 15 messages and nobody replies. At 11.40, someone calls me back and immediately hangs up. What the f***? She calls Airbnb again, stays on the phone with them for two more hours with two more reps, who aren't any of the original five that she talked to. She provides additional evidence. They say they will review the situation and get back to her with a decision. The decision is that she won't qualify for air cover or a refund, essentially telling her that she can go f herself. She at a desperation moves back into the Airbnb because it cost her 2,500. You know, looking at this place, You'd think that it would cost you like a dollar to live there. But no, it's 2,500 times that amount. At the moment, it seems to be where the situation is at. He found another cockroach and is now staying at that horrible house. It seems like she also maybe went back home. Uh, I, 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 hope, I hope they just give her back her phone money. Now for horror story number two, my story. Now, like I said, I had this period where I was kind of just seeing w which places I like long term. And the first apartment I started that journey with was in London. The Airbnb from the photos looked absolutely lovely. And when I arrived there, it, it was lovely. It was really, really nice. For the first night that I was there, my girlfriend at the time uh, came over, stayed at the house and uh, left the next day in the morning. And I thought that all was fine, except it wasn't. So what happened is that I didn't notice that in the policies for that specific Airbnb, you could not have any people over, not during the day to drink tea or coffee, and not overnight as well. Very restrictive, but you know, it's it's part of the rules, whatever, it's my f up. The host had a ring doorbell camera on the front, and she got a bit angry at me, I apologized, and all seemed to be fine. Again, it was the first day out of 30. For the next month, every time I got home, this woman was just shouting at me from the ring doorbell camera. I go in, even at like midnight, and I just hear this fairly old woman just being like, hello, hello, hello. I know that you're here, 
as I'm opening the door and going inside into my temporary home. As I'm sitting down to eat my dinner, I can still hear this woman from the door shouting, Hello? Hello? So that was like one sign that something was wrong with this person. Situation number two that happened was that one time I, I, made, I made the horrible mistake of asking Polly, that's the name of the host, where the trash cans uh, were. So I could throw my trash inside of them. I then got a message in response, which I wish I could show you. I can't because when you start a dispute with someone on Airbnb with a host, uh, you don't you don't have access to the, your messages with them anymore, at least from what I've seen. But she had sent me the equivalent of, I'd say, about five pages of text. The entire history of where the, the trash cans or bins, in her words, used to be, where they're located now, um, her opinion about recycling, and so on and so on. It was a f essay. So yeah, I mean, that whole month was a not so very pleasant experience. Nothing horrible, but again, it's not so fun to have someone shout at you through a camera every time uh, you're, you're going at home tr trying to relax, you know? Not very fun. That's me drawing the, the camera. <laughs> I reach the end of my stay. I, I leave. I organize the place to the best of my abilities without, you know, cleaning it, because of course I wouldn't. Uh, I'm paying for a cleaning fee. But I wash all the dishes, I, I put everything back into place. There's a reason every other Airbnb host that I've had has left a review on my Airbnb account saying that I was uh, lovely. Or is a very great guest. He left my house nice and clean. He respected all my house rules. It is very easy to communicate with Or. Highly recommend to all hosts. Or is a very... <laughs> this is a funny one. Or is a very calm and neat guest. He was here for the Beyonce concert. I hope he had a great fun time in Stockholm. I will recommend him. Nothing but good things to say by all my hosts who aren't evil. I vacate the Airbnb and then I get a message from Polly about how she thinks that I may have used more than one blanket, which I have. There's no rule on Airbnb about using multiple blankets. I tried one early on and it wasn't as comfortable for me as one of the other blankets available in the house, the one that was on the couch. I tell her, yes, ma'am, I did use another blanket. This is not 1984. I can use multiple blankets. She starts going on a spiel about how this is gonna cost her like another 200 pounds to clean those blankets. And I'm like, what the f are you talking about? Wait, wait what? <laughs> I've lived in places before. I know that that's not how much it costs to wash a blanket. I've lived a normal human life before. I know. What, what kind of blanket cleaning service are you are you paying for? Roping me into this scam of yours. Anyways, I refuse to pay it. I tell her that there's nothing that forces me to do it. She talks to Airbnb support. I tell them the exact same thing. But then this motherfucker Poppy, she tells them and shows them evidence with her invasive secret camera of the fact that my girlfriend at the time stayed at the Airbnb on the first night. Even though she said that it's fine now, even though we settled it, she just fucking used that and took my money. I paid 60 pounds for cleaning a goddamn blanket. What, are you, what are, you, are you shitting me? What in God's name do you think that you're doing? Anyways, I hope everyone's staying safe this uh, in this spooky time in January. I think doing like Airbnb horror stories could be like a neat little series. So let me know if that's something that you're interested in. I can find more stories like that. I can tell about more of mine. <laughs> like and subscribe to get a private DM from me about where your trash cans are located.